Hi, hello my dear students. Welcome to our channel Rajesh Biology and I am Rajesh MSC Zoology. Today our topic is Sarcomere Structure. Okay, so previously we completed that muscle structure and in that muscle structure what we discussed is like uh, all the muscle fibers. Muscle fibers are the structural units of the muscle and that muscle fibers all are together form bundle of muscle fibers this bundle is called fascicle such many fascicles together form one muscle this is what we discussed and in that also the muscle fiber has myofibril that myofibril or myofilament it is alternatively it has alternative light and dark bands this is what we completed so this is i'm going to take out this myofibril i'm taking out and i'm pasting here and i'm enlarged this okay once this myofibril which has alternate dark and light bands if i enlarge that that will be look like this this is the myofibril the myofibril mainly has a structure called sarcomere structure called what sarcomere very very important structure it is sarcomere is known as a functional unit or contractile unit functional or contractile unit of the muscle functional unit or contractile unit of the muscle it is called okay this is clear what is sarcomere means generally sarcomere has this type of structures like it is the just imagine as it is a actin i am already told you actin and myosin are alternatively present on myofibril so blue color line it is an actin for example okay and this red color line is myosin one actin one myosin it is actin it is what myosin myosin is also called thick band myosin is also called what thick band actin is also uh, thick filament myosin is called thick filament actin is called thin filament thin filament myosin is nothing but a dark band myosin is nothing but a dark band okay and actin forms a light band like this it is present continuously throughout the length of the muscle fiber for example muscle fiber length is 4 cm one muscle fiber length is 4 cm a myofibril also has 4 cm length okay now another one important thing first of all i will write these names actin actin is nothing but a thin filament it is what a thin filament Myosin is a, a thick filament. Actin and myosin both are arranged in a parallel manner, alternate manner. Okay, that's why it gives a striated appearance because one thin filament, one thick filament, thin filament and thick filament. One thin and one thick. Like that, filaments are arranged in a alternate manner. Okay. We will discuss about the actin filament structure. Actin, it has, actin is nothing but it is called isotropic band. The thin band is called what? The thin band where the actin is present that is called isotropic band. Isotropic or I band. Why it is called isotropic band? If we observe a skeletal muscle under a microscope, you know, microscope, how it works, for example, it is a microscope, okay, and there is a, um, here, there is a stage to keep the slide, okay, and it has uh, this type of structure, here there is a mirror, it is a mirror, you know why the mirror is present, to observe anything under microscope, we require light, that light is present, uh, that light is uh, reflected on this uh, mirror, and that uh, reflection is uh, uh, passed through this slide and that we can see here so when light passes through this slide electronic microscope not only the normal compound microscope when we observe under electronic microscope also the light should pass through this slide when light passes through this uh, 
the thin filament allow the light it allows the light we can see the thin filament because it allows the light that's why it is called isotropic band but thick filament because of its thickness the myosin never allow the light it allows very little amount of light or it uh, very less amount of light it allows that's why it is called an isotropic band it is called what an isotropic band so we can divide it as a like a i band isotropic band and a band and between two a bands there is a thin band the thin band the thin portion is called i band here it is the i band clear it is why i'm drawing all this at the top is because i'm going to draw here a detailed picture of the sarcomere that's why i'm using that upper portion so you can see here it is the i band where there is blue color where there is no red okay where there is no myosin that is only the i band once myosin is enter myosin is completely a band only okay myosin is completely a band but actin some portion is present in i band some portion is present in a band if you detailedly observe this diagram some portion of actin filament present in the i band the remaining portion is present in the a band okay so i band means isotropic band which allow the light a band means an isotropic band which absorbs the light that is myosin is this clear up to now now next another one important the a band in the middle of the a band there is a g line i'm going to draw here so we will observe that uh, uh, sarcomere structure in a clear manner previously we completed that muscle fiber and uh, this is the uh, uh, one myofibril one myofilament it is if i take this portion this portion if i take or this portion if i take to enlarge here there is a g line this is called dobie's line it is called what dobie's line but it is also easily we can known as it is a g line why because it gives a g type appearance a z type appearance z line it is okay either side of the z line there is a thin filament either side of the z line there is a thin filament this blue color lines are nothing but actins they are what actins i'll discuss the detailed structure of the actin also for later and on this side also there is um, actin so actin is bind with what it bind with the g line you know g line is made up of actinin we will discuss that one later actinin is another protein that is different from the actin okay actinin has the ability to bind with the actin these are the two g lines in between these two actins there is a myosin myosin is a thick band like this it is thick band okay like uh, the actins bind with uh, one g line as like here it is also myosin bind with one m line this is a m line in the red color it is a myosin okay now clearly observe this there is a few lines are there two g lines one m line it is g line the portion between two g lines is called a sarcomere it is called what a sarcomere sarcomere is the structural unit sorry functional unit or contractile unit because contraction takes place here only the sliding filament theory we will discuss further later okay first understand the sarcomere structure any doubts here it is an actin myosin actin actins bind with the g line myosin bind with the m line clear up to now okay this actins are known as where there is a actin actually in a clear manner if we want to define where there is no myosin where there is no myosin that is called i band that is called what i band so in the middle of the i band there is a g line in the middle of the i band there is a g line 
from where to where the myosin is extend that is a band so in the middle of the a band there is a m line in the middle of the i band there is a g line in the middle of the a band there is a m line so sarcomere how it forms one half of the i band one side full a band and the remaining half of the i band two halves i band two halves and one full a band this is the sarcomere structure between two g lines in between two g lines this is the structure how it look like now if we observe carefully within the a band actin is also present actin is present in a band also but myosin is not present in the i band if it is present then that is called not called i band okay so actin is present in a band so a band has both actin sorry both actin and myosin actin and myosin actin and myosin but i band purely it has actin only g line is also there okay it is another important question also and another one within the a band why it is called a band why it is called i band what is the definition abbreviation of i band and e band that is we have to understand first when we are observed under the microscope the light passes through this the light passes through this that means what thin filaments allow the light thin filaments allow the light that's why it is called isotropic i means what isotropic band come to the a band it not allow it cannot allow the light through it it cannot allow the light through it that's why it is an isotropic band it is what an isotropic band because it not allow the light okay so that's why in what i'm saying if m line enters here if it is the m line is present up to here it not allow the light that's why up to here it is the a band an isotropic from here it is the isotropic clear the concept the basic concept which allow the light which passes the light through it that is the i band which not passes the light through it that is the a band clear this is the sarcomere structure and not only that in between it is a band in a band also light is can pass in a little manner here because here only myosin is there but in this portion actin myosin actin myosin actin myosin three extra bands are also there so it is even more thick even though it is a thick band a band is nothing but thick band in thick band also even more thick portion is there that is the overlapping portion it is what overlapping portion actin myosin are overlapped non overlapping portion is there where there is no actin only where there is no actin only myosin is present the non overlapping zone of the a band or thin portion of thick band is called h zone what it is called h zone thin portion of thick band here it is very thick in your textbook also maybe you may observe the diagram it is very thick like this it is very thick in thick portion also in thick band also there is a light portion there is a light portion the light portion of the dark band is called h zone okay this is sarcomere structure actin myosin are called actin and myosin are called what they are called they are called contractile proteins actin is made up of two filamentous actins actin is made up of two filamentous actins and the two filamentous actins are present in a helical manner they are bound together they are arranged in a helical manner like this like a dna it is one f actin it is another one f actin this filamentous actin f actin it is this each filamentous actin is made up of so many globular actins these all are globular actins it is a globular actin it is a globular actin so these all are what g actins they are these are what g actins so many g actins together form one f actin such type of two f actins are helically wound together and they are attached to one actinin 
actinin is a elastic elastic tissue we are calling this as g line dobie's line okay cross line dobie's line simply we can use that word dobie's line or g line it is made up of elastic tissue and it is a uh, uh, consist uh, it consists of uh, actinin protein okay leave that about we will discuss further actinin and everything so this is the actins actin is not simple as like this it still has some binding sites on this these are myosin binding sites these are what myosin binding sites if they binding sites and they present on the actin why they are called myosin binding sites because they are going to bind with the myosin actually the myosin is bind with this uh, actin sorry with the help of myosin binding sites so they are they are meant for the myosin they are meant for the myosin okay that's why they are called myosin binding sites but this myosin binding sites are not exposed they are covered they are covered by another protein which runs parallel to the actin that is also two okay two proteins which run parallel to the actin that is tropo myosin tropo myosin is different from the myosin myosin is a contractile protein tropo myosin is not contractile protein contractile proteins are only two actin and myosin then what it is it is a regulatory protein it is a regulatory protein why it is called regulatory protein we will discuss later where there is a myosin binding sites there is some uh, another protein is also there another regulatory protein this is this is called troponin it is also present at regular intervals at regular intervals where there is myosin binding sites there is a another protein that is troponin so this is the actin structure actin has three different proteins actin two f actins two tropomyosins and several troponins each troponin is made up of three subunits troponin i which bind with the actin troponin t which bind with the tropomyosin and troponin c which will bind with the calcium while muscle contraction takes place this is actin structure later we'll discuss the myosin structure also now myosin has uh, monomers that is meromyosins many meromyosins together form the myosin many meromyosins each meromyosin has a head globular head a short or and a tail globular head short arm and a tail like this it look like a two snakes together but it is one meromyosin it is one meromyosin each meromyosin is made up of two portions one is a heavy meromyosin another one is a light meromyosin heavy meromyosin is has heavy meromyosin has two portions one is a head another one is a short arm or cross arm because it is present in a crossed manner in a cross manner that's why it is a short arm or cross arm or a neck head neck together heavy meromyosin tail consists light meromyosin heavy meromyosin has the head of heavy meromyosin the head of myosin has two binding sites one is for atp synthesis actually head of the meromyosin is nothing but atp hydrolyzed enzyme it look like it act like a atp hydrolyzed enzyme atp binding site and another one is a actin binding site simple this is the 
myosin structure. Such many mero myosins are uh, fused and they all are present and they, all their tiles are attached with one what it is M line one M line middle line it is made up of fibrous tissue M line is made up of fibrous tissue then next we will observe this entire sarcomere structure in a detailed manner how the actin is present how the myosin is present okay and later in the next video we will discuss about the sliding filament theory so for example if it is actin filaments it is myosin and it is actin so where there is up to the myosin that is called a band where there is no myosin only actin is present that is i band okay this is i band this is a band in the middle of the a band in the middle of the a band there is a fibrous tissue layer there is a fibrous tissue layer that fibrous tissue layer name is m line because it is present in the middle that's why it is called m line that is m line as like within the in the middle of the i band also there is a line there is a line that is called g line that is called what g line or z line it is why it is called z line because it gives a z type appearance because of the appearance z like appearance it is a g line g line it is made up of actinin it is made up of what actinin very important it is not a actin it is actinin actinin has the ability to bind with the actin so this is actin okay and this z line is actually the elastic tissue it is an elastic tissue sheath it is a fibrous tissue sheath okay and uh, with the actinin the actin binds like this with m line the myosin binds like this now in between two g lines in between two g lines two i bands are there two i bands these two i bands also not complete i bands half i band here half i band there because the remaining i band is another side like this so 50 percent of the i band on one side 50 percent of the i band on one side is present and 100 percent one thick band a band is there is this clear the portion which is present between two g lines is called sarcomere it is called what a sarcomere sarcomere is the functional unit or contractile unit of the muscle okay now this sarcomere detailed structure if we observe in a careful manner first i'll explain the contractile proteins actin structure and myosin structure right so this is the actin and actin is made up of so many globular actins actin is nothing but a protein and that protein is actually two actins are there two filamentous actins observe this each circle is a g actin g means globular actin such many globular actins are arranged in a helical manner like this it is a globular actin one globular actin globular actin all these globular actins together form one f actin one f actin f means filamentous actin it is a filamentous actin it is another filamentous actin such uh, filamentous actins are formed by the many globular actins one entire actin is um, that uh, thin filament is made up of two actin filaments two f actins one thin filament is made up of two f actins is it clear now and then next on this actin there is a, a special site there is a special sites they are irregularly arranged 
along the length of the actin some special sites star sites they are arranged irregularly in a regular or regular manner okay they are present on this actin at regular intervals they given the textbook line is also at regular intervals there is some um, binding sites are present on the actin that myosin binding sites they are what myosin binding sites very important these binding sites are to bind with the myosin that's why they are called myosin binding sites important point is myosin binding sites present on the actin but this myosin binding sites are not exposed are not exposed they are covered by they are covered by a another protein which is actually the regulatory protein which run parallel to the actin there is a two tropomyosins are there these are what tropo myosins tropomyosins they are okay and uh, at the same time where there is myosin binding sites uh, there are there are a special a compound protein a complex protein is there that is uh, troponin what is that that is a troponin this is a troponin like this troponin has three subunits troponin has how many subunits three subunits one is troponin t troponin t bind with the tropomyosin another one is troponin c very important troponin c bind with the calcium ions which is very important for the muscle contraction another one is troponin i i means i band which bind with the i band means actin okay so this is the troponins troponins are present at regular intervals where there is there is a binding site there is a troponin the troponin is made up of three subunits that's why it is called complex protein the three subunits are troponin t troponin c troponin i okay troponin t bind with the tropomyosin c bind with the calcium in future and future means whenever it want to contract at that time calcium ions will be released we will discuss that one also troponin c and troponin i will bind with the actin this is a actin filament structure this is how a thin band is a form this is a thin filament structure every thin filament has so can you say what it is it is what globular actin now what it is all the globular actins together form what this is what filamentous actin how many filamentous actins two filamentous actins like this two filamentous actins how they arrange like a dna helical manner double helical manner it is okay and what are present on this there is binding sites which binding sites these are these are myosin binding sites how they present at regular intervals they present they are the myosin binding sites are they exposed no they are covered it is covered by what they are covered by another protein which is also run parallel to the actin that means double helical structure that is tropomyosin tropomyosin covers that is it sufficient no there is another one protein is also there that is a troponin is troponin is a simple protein no it is a complex protein it is made up of how many subunits three subunits what are the three subunits the three subunits are troponin i troponin t troponin c troponin i bind with actin troponin t bind with myosin troponin c bind with calcium this is how every actin is a every actin structure is look like this at regular intervals troponin where there is a troponin there is a actin myosin binding site and that is covered by tropomyosin clear this is the 
thin filament structure thin filament structure come to the thick filament structure i will draw thick filament structure on this side then it will be uh, somewhat clear when compare with this side it becomes more clumsy because of that labeling this side i'll show later i'll show the muzzle contraction also if possible in this video or in the other video so come to this um, this is myosin myosin filament is actually made up of so many mero myosins myosin itself it is like a monomer but according to our textbooks what they given is um, uh, mero myosins together form one myosin filament okay so myosins uh, the monomer of myosin is mero myosin mero myosin has i'll draw here mero myosin has two parts one is heavy mero myosin one is heavy mero myosin another one is light mero myosin one is heavy mero myosin another one is light mero myosin what is heavy mero myosin in this it is a head globular head of myosin globular head it is a cross arm it is cross arm or neck globular head and cross arm both together called heavy mero myosin heavy mero myosin okay so the light mero myosin is uh, the tails tails are the light mero myosin the head is the heavy mero myosin head is heavy mero myosin and tails are light mero myosin okay clear it is so this is uh, okay here it is the globular heads the tails they are helical together and the tails are attached to the m line okay so like this the heads are directed towards the actin here there is an actin here there is an actin the heads are directed towards the actin for example if my hand sorry okay my body is the m line and these my hands both are myosins if it is one myosin the it is the light mero myosin but my fist and my wrist these are heavy mero myosin my fist is the globular head and my wrist is the uh, short arm so it is a cross arm it is in a cross posture okay in this cross posture it is going to directed towards the actin like this so the myosin heads are directed towards the actin and each myosin head has two binding sites one is for the atp that's why it is called atp binding site it is called what atp binding site and another one it is very special the another one is actin binding site now you may get clarity some actin binding site present on myosin head myosin binding site present on actin filament okay for every mero myosin there is a two binding sites one is for the atp another one is for the actin binding site here also there is only one binding site that to covered it is it is covered by tropomyosin okay so that covered binding sites are myosin binding sites is this clear up to now okay all the light meromyosin tiles are attached to the middle line or fibrous line here they form this type of cross arms this is how the thick filament is present this is also all the meromyosin heads are run backwards and they attach it to the m line on both the sides here also like this clear now here there is a actin this z line okay now very clearly observe this in in actin also 
in actin also myosin is present like myosin enter into this actin myosin enter into this actin so here it cannot absorb the light it cannot absorb the light that's why this is a completely a band where up to the m line is there that is the a band where there is no myosin there is no myosin this is i band what it is it is the i band okay and here it is also i band it is also i band these both are g lines now where is the h zone h zone where it is present h zone is the light portion between within the within the a band there is a light portion i have already told you previously that uh, within the a band there is a light portion the light portion of the dark band the thin portion of the thick band is the h zone this is the h zone okay so i hope you understand the structure of the actin and myosin how they arrange Okay